going to start recording. So I just created a ground plane just so when I when I render it, it's not just going to show black at the bottom. And I'm just going to scale this up as much as I can. So when I zoom in to the dumbbell, it's going to what you can also do is you can also do like a like a studio kind of setup. I'm just going to set my camera, sorry. So and then I'm just going to do a soft select and I'm just going to bring this up. I just kind of rotate this just so I can kind of put a wall behind it. Oops. There you go. Just set the dumbbell. So now I'm just going to keep it like this. And now uh, I'm just going to make this my render cam. I'm just using my perspective. So I'm just going to make a new perspective camera. And I'll just I'll just render using the old perspective. But for you guys it's better if you actually make uh, a real camera. I don't know why perspective and perspective one. Oh, it didn't work. There we go. All right. So first thing is, is we're going to go to Arnold and we're going to create some lights. And the one thing that Arnold doesn't have is directional light but you know area lights work the same kind of right yeah. so we're gonna create our very first area light and when you look at an area light basically the the little kind of stick little thingy coming out is basically telling you which direction the light is going to uh, point at all right so you can you can scale this up. And then kind of just point it in the direction. And if you actually stupid team viewer. If you change your workspace, uh, I think it's where's the isn't there a default uh, lighting one? In no uh, rendering standard, maybe rendering. All right, here we go. I think okay, so we're gonna go to lights. Why, where is it? Where is it? No, this isn't it. It should be. Hold on. This only visible lights. This is too much. We're not going to get into crazy rendering. I just want some basic stuff. Um, post sculpting basics. You know what? I'm just going to go to default and let's see what we can do. So I'm just going to basically, I can't, I don't know where the, there's a Arnold, Arnold render open, Arnold render view. Lights, utility, licensing, light manager. Uh, no, no, I can't find it. Anyways, Arnold has a cool feature that. Um, so basically, when you're when you're setting up the light, you're kind of looking in the perspective view and you're like, oh, okay, this is what my light is looking at. But what you can actually do is, I'm just gonna change my camera view here. If you go to panels, when your light is selected and you go to, there should be, there's this option called look through selected. And basically you can do this with anything. If you have your light selected and you click on it, now I'm moving the light. So now you can actually set what the exact angle and everything you want for the light, okay? You can put the light exactly in the direction that you want. 
I'm getting all these errors in the back because it kind of makes a camera in the light and basically the near clipping plane and the far clipping plane are really low so that's why it's doing that but this is a, a neat feature and in the Arnold render view there's all you have to do is have the light selected and click on a button and it makes a new window with this view so you don't have to screw around with your regular camera so I'm going to change this back to perspective and we're just going to leave the light here we're going to go to Arnold and we're going to open the render view and we're just going to hit this play button uh-oh does anybody know what's going on huh so basically if we select our light and we go to our in our settings here we have intensity but our exposure is set to zero so if you change the exposure to like 10 it starts to render okay and if you keep upping that I don't know why it should be you know what Teddy no no um, it's uh, no 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 okay set exposure if you set exposure to zero it's just gonna render black if you set intensity you shouldn't have to do that but okay yeah you should be able to control everything with uh, with the exposure and leave the intensity alone but I think another problem is the way it works is this spread feature it doesn't really follow this it kind of it kind of spreads it uh, at a bigger radius so watch if you turn down the spread watch what happens to the light it gets it gets brighter do you know why it's getting brighter because pretend the spread zero is this <coughs> sorry my voice pretend the spread is the center of the area light and one is the outer box okay so when you set it to one the lighting gets softer because it's spreading over the whole surface of the area light when you when you change the spread to closer to zero it's kind of bringing it down to a pinpoint all right and the bigger you make it obviously the softer the light is going to get um where is this illuminate by default change that to one it should be only exposure yeah see oh because i think because no oh. yeah see teddy if you leave intensity to one you can just play with the exposure you could do it either way teddy's right and so am I. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So nice. Hey, I admit when I'm wrong. I admit when you guys are right. Um, lighting shape. When it says quad, no, this is not. No, it's quadratic. That's hold on. Da, 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 da. What else? What else? What else? You really don't need to play anymore. You can kind of. You can kind of just create. A basic studio light if I rotate from the top view is you're gonna have your key light you're gonna have your rim light and you're gonna have a fill light so a basic three studio uh, studio lighting is just three passes so if I just google that for a second I'll show you what it looks like uh, 
You can go back to your desk if you want, or you can chill out here. All right, if I it's up to you. I would, that feel really good to you, like. <laughs> <laughs> you probably know this already. No. I'm so, not, so basically, this is three-point lighting, and anytime you kind of uh, have have just like like even like your turntable and stuff. I'm not going to get into um, HDRIs, but I can, I can show you really quickly. But basically, you, you never want your key light to come from your camera view. So if your camera, if you're looking here, you don't want your key light to be right in front of the camera or right behind the camera. It should always be off a little bit. The fill light is always opposite the key light and then you have a backlight which is just a rim light so basically you get that nice halo around your your object okay and the way I was taught lighting it's always you, you have a, a certain value for the intensity of your key light and then your fill light and your backlight is only a certain percentage of that so for fill I only use I use about half and rim light I kind of play around either half or a little bit less. So if we just take this, our camera is straight on, so we'll just change this. Oh, this these computers are a little slow, eh? I I hope you guys can render your final projects. So I'm just gonna stop it for a second. So it doesn't keep updating. So I'm just going to change it. I'm just going to control, control D to duplicate the light. It's going to move it over. Use this as my fill. I'm going to change the exposure to 5. I'm just going to go down by double. or, And then I'm just going to put this behind the dumbbell. Usually, I also like adding uh, like uh, another light from the bottom to, to kind of mimic a bounce light, like bounce lighting. But with HDRIs and everybody using HDRIs now, you basically get, get all that for free. All right. So I'm just going to put a light back there. I'm going to change. I'm just going to leave that at five. And also just keep an eye and just name your lights okay just go key fill and then rim okay and that way you know which light which light is doing what so if we turn this on is it did it render did it render no okay Let's just change the rim a little higher so we can see. Uh, maybe too much. Feel like maybe like eight. And basically, I don't have shadows turned on like cast shadows basically um, you should only have one light will cast shadows no other lights will cast shadows okay so you select your fill light and you turn off cast shadows select your rim light turn off cast shadows so only your key light is going to cast the shadows Okay, I think if we select our little geometry here, we can go to the Arnold tab, and then here you can select what the object is going to do. Is it going to cast shadows? Is it going to receive shadows? Um, everything is usually on by default. Diffuse reflection, reflection, diffuse transmission. Should be okay, right? Huh? 
Why aren't I getting a shadow? Hmm. Teddy? Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't I getting a shadow? Which one's this so far? The light is so far? Pardon? Uh, the grid? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. So maybe let's assign a basic Arnold shader, okay? So let's go to our hyper shade. We're just gonna go to Arnold. And where is the default? Standard surface. Turn this off. I keep forgetting to turn it off. All right. It's too white, Teddy. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your word for it. Okay. And that's kind of racist. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. It's it's beautiful the way it is, Teddy. Yeah. Don't be don't be like that, okay? <laughs> yeah. How dare you, Teddy? How dare you? Okay. So we're still not getting shadows, but we're getting reflections and all that. So basically, we have to play with the shader for our ground. So we're not going to cast shadows. We're not going to accept reflections. We're not going to accept specular. <laughs> We should just be uh, visible in reflections, visible in reflections. Oh, this is a, if it's visible, sorry. Dun, dun, dun. Poly cast. We're not casting. Let's just go to the shader then. Oh my god. Turn it off. Always never leave the play button on. If you select your shader and you want to see all the nodes, you can either right click and go to graph network and then you'll see everything nicely. Same thing with our shader we did for the dumbbell. It's just right click, graph. So let's go to our standard shader. Specular, I'm just going to turn it off. Um, How about the spectral roughness? The roughness? Yes. This one? The spectral roughness. Roughness. Oh, turn that down. This is uh, field of, I can't remember what IOR is. Let's see. Okay. We're still not getting shadows. Let's go back. I should be base. Uh, nope. Where is it? Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. This should be. It should automatically have it. We already have uh, cast shadows on. The geometry is is visible so I don't understand why it's not working if the base is one transmission this is just transparency let's just close this for a second close this on visible I should it's not a hold out 
Receive shadow, cast shadow. So what's the problem? This doesn't need to cast shadow, but it re receives shadow. So that's fine. Let's check our area light. Shadow color. I'm just gonna select red. Shadow density. No, it's fine. Illuminate by default. Our light is casting. Resolution. Why? I think it is casting, it's just very soft. Oh, sorry guys. We only did the texturing for, we only did the texturing for the handle and the handle is pretty far, but it should still be casting something. Let me just uh, apply another shader there we go okay I just didn't have a I didn't have a shader on the actual I didn't have an Arnold shader on the actual dumbbell part and I just changed the color of the shader to red so I can see what's going on so I guess we should actually be texturing the whole asset before we start lighting it but what are you gonna do Let's see if we move it closer. What happens? There we go. Shadows get a little brighter. So basically our problem was we didn't have an Arnold shader on the dumbbell section. Um, if you want to create an HDRI, Arnold does it really well. All you have all you have to do is create this sky dome light and if you click on that Arnold goes crazy I don't even know if I can do this at home my computer might just freeze Ugh. I don't want to come here on the weekend <laughs> I need a computer okay Huh? Yeah, you don't have two kids to feed. <laughs> um, so basically, it creates a sphere for you. And under the, the color, you do the same thing. You, you add a file. You can go on your favorite browsing website and look for HDRIs. Um, let's go back and type in free HDRIs. Okay. Oh, I hope I don't have to sign in. I hate it when they make you sign in. Oh, that's just the HDRIs. What do you guys want? Indoor, outdoor, studio? Studio, right? Let's do... Let's do small studio. 
I'm gonna download 1K. Show folder. Just gonna put it in my file. Save. File, Dropbox. There's your HDRI. Sorry. So go to color, file, folder, and just go to wherever you saved it. Da -da -da, small studio, HDRI. There we go. Leave color space. Can't remember if we had to play around with any of this. I'm not familiar yet with this. But let's let's see what it looks like. Come on. What? Where's the renderer? Minimize, maximize, there it is. Ooh, it's overexposed. So basically, our regular lights are too bright because now we're using an HDRI. So let's just tone down our our lights. I'm just gonna turn this off. Teddy, why is our light so, so much, huh? Too much intensity. Ah, oh, you and your intensity, always with the intensity. So, the under under the skylight, or the sky dome light attribute, you can the intensity. You can just turn it down a bit. And I have no idea why it looks like it's floating. Is our scene actually floating? It is. Oh, that's another reason why the shadow was not touching properly. Make sure your ground plane is touching. Errors by Professor Phil. Okay, there we go. Now you guys can light. Add an HDRI and you're done. No, another thing you can do, um, is under the Arnold um, you can Teddy can correct me if I'm wrong okay. but um, <laughs> you fucking <can. laughs> no no I admit when I'm wrong but I can't remember how but under the skylight let's say you wanted to render the actual um, HDRI dome there's an option to turn it on I'm not a hundred percent you basically have to you basically it takes this and it duplicates it and you basically do the same thing I think uh, I'll have to look that up but let's just stick with the studio lighting for now and basically this this dome with your key lights and everything when you're rendering with an HDRI all these little area lights we made with the key and the fill and everything are is kind of useless. Because basically when you look at the HDRI dome, you have your key light. Your key light is right here. And your fill light is over here. All right? And where is it? Where is it? And you're you're basically getting your bounce for free down here. Okay? And if you want to change the lighting using an HDRI, what do you do, Teddy? Huh? You rotate. You sit and rotate, Teddy. I'm just joking. You can rotate your HDRI 
and put your key light wherever you want. Okay? The good thing about this is if you want to add extra highlights, extra like um, hot spots that are not in your key light from your HDRI, this is when we would use area lights. Okay? So if you really wanted something intense, you can come in, change this to 15, and now you can add you can add another turn this off. You can add another another key light. Let's just say from right from the top. Okay? And just render that. Okay. Just put it to 20. Let's see. There you go. Just to show you. Just in case you want to add a little bit more that from whatever your HDRI light is not giving you. All right, and we got all our bump. We got everything. It actually turned out not too bad. Um, I'm going to save this. Your resolution, you can change this to 10. What's, what's, what is, uh, I'm not going to get into the, to the, with the Arnold uh, render settings, the quality render settings. Just leave it at default for now. If you guys want, uh, I can I can look into it and give you some basic uh, lighting videos for like glass and stuff like that for the future. Because the one thing I'm just gonna I'm just gonna uh, certain elements in in the real world like glass have certain ref, uh, refraction values have certain reflection values like steel is reflective to a certain degree aluminum reflects a little differently and basically in the real world there you can look up uh, Google is your best friend you can look up uh, glass uh, refraction index and it will tell you the glass ref refraction index is 1.517 okay so basically if you I'll, I'll, I'll do a video on this but basically if you pump this into the ref refraction it will give you uh, the reflections based on the glass and the HDR you did and it'll mimic glass pretty closely okay but remember these values here are based on real real world uh, scale okay so for your final projects that you're gonna do in third semester and fourth semester make sure you do shit real uh, in, in proper scale okay so if you're if you're modeling Thor's hammer get get you know a, a, a proper scale for it you know just download a humanoid model and use the measuring tools I gave you and scale it up to about six foot and kind of put the hammer in the guy's hand and see if it looks right. If it looks too tiny, you know you gotta scale it up and then when you're rendering it, it's gonna look more realistic, okay? Just re make sure you guys always do things to proper scale. Can't stress that enough. Um, I'm just going to stop this here.